Hey everyone, how's it going? So, as summer approaches, I've actually been getting a lot of questions as far as cooling a room or a house on a window air conditioner that is running on solar. So this is possible. However, based on the questions and comments that I've been receiving on several of my videos regarding solar, there's a lot of confusion and uh, misconception as far as how this would actually work. Now there's a few videos on YouTube that demonstrate window air units that are actually specifically designed to run on solar. That is, they'll run on 12, 24, or 48 volts, and they run really good. And it all has to do with the compressor, whether or not it can be wound to run in that voltage. Now these two air conditioners that you see in front of you, both window air units, are set up to run in 120 volts. So they cannot be run on a 12 volt system, so they need an inverter. Now, the one on the bottom there is a 12,000 BTU high air unit. It runs at 10 amps when at full power. The one on the top is also a higher unit, but it's a 5,000 BTU unit that only runs at 4.5 amps when at full power. Two totally different beasts. Now, when I'm reading some of the comments, I am hearing that, for example, the unit on top will only draw approximately 450 watts while it's actually running. So get a 500 watt solar setup uh, minus the loss uh, during the conversion with the inverter and a 500 watt inverter should be just fine, right? That's totally wrong. The reason is because of the compressor that is on the inside of a window air conditioner, just like the compressor in your fridge or your freezer. So if you're trying to run a window air unit on solar, you need to make sure that you have an inverter that will be able to take the surge of the startup. So when each and every compressor starts up, it, it has a huge draw for just maybe a second or two, or at least until the unit is actually in full power mode. So, for example, the one on the top here, being that it's 4.5 amps, it may actually draw 20 or 25 amps just to start the compressor, and then when it's running, it comes back down to its running uh, draw, which is about 4.5 amps. And the one on the bottom is a 10 amp unit, and it probably pulls around 60 amps to start. Now, you might be saying, well, my fuse box, I've only got 15 amp fuses. Well, fuses are a lot different because they don't just blow as soon as they hit 15.1 amps. It's a slow blow setup. Now, if there's a short, it's obviously going to blow much faster because of the heat. But you can actually draw from a fridge or from an air conditioner much more than your fuse panel is rated at for a very short period of time. So... When sizing out an inverter, you need to make sure that you get an inverter that's going to be able to handle the surge. If you're running completely off the grid, you need to make sure you have a battery bank that's going to be able to supply the energy needed to the inverter so that it can supply the energy to these air conditioners. Right now I'm going to demonstrate um, my inverter, which is a 5,000 watt power jack split phase inverter that will run at 240 volts, but I've got it set up in 120 right now. And I've just got it running off in an extension cord right now just for this demonstration. And this is actually what confuses a lot of people because they would assume that, well, the inverter is definitely capable of delivering 10 amps, so it should be able to run the air conditioner on the bottom. But that's just simply not the case, and I will demonstrate. So my inverter is currently running, or my battery bank is currently at 13.40 volts. I'm taking in about 10 amps from the sun right now. It's still early morning. It's only about 9 o'clock. And so there's definitely enough juice there to be able to uh, keep the inverter running. And this is obviously the cord uh, to this bottom uh, air unit. And this extension cord is actually running to my inverter. The inverter is on right now. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so the fan is on right now. The compressor usually takes uh, a couple seconds to kick in. It is running on the cool mode right now. This air unit is designed that if there's a power outage, it'll automatically restart when the power comes back on. So here in a second, when the compressor goes to turn on, it's actually gonna fault the inverter.
Okay, so the compressor tried to start up. It couldn't, if you can hear that in the background. That's the inverter that is in shutdown mode right now, so it's not powering anything. That's the safety shutdown. I'm going to go ahead and reset the inverter. Okay, so I went ahead and reset the inverter. It's running again. It's back on. The inverter fortunately has a safety in there where when it draws too much, it automatically faults. So it doesn't damage the inverter. However, you could see that the air conditioner was trying to start up. The, the LEDs, um, or the LCD display got really dim, and you could hear a little bit of a hum. It just, that inverter just is not strong enough to be able to start this air conditioner on the bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and try the top one. And this top one is obviously a much smaller inverter, or window air unit. Alright, so plugged in. I'm going to turn it to max cool, high speed, and we'll go ahead and start it up. Okay, so you can see, very cold. The compressor is running. You can hear it running. There was a beep from the inverter, which is common. That happens when I have the, the fridge plugged in. The fridge kicks in. The one single bead just means that it's close to its maximum, but not quite. And this is cooling just fine. Obviously, it's not venting the hot air outside, but this is just for a demonstration. So with this demonstration here, this is a good indication that you cannot run everything that you think you can run just because it says it'll run at a certain amperage or wattage. You need to make sure that you have something that will be able to supply the surge power for something like window air units or refrigerators or deep freezers because the compressor the piston it takes a lot of energy to get that thing going again so your peak surge may be five to ten times what the actual nominal rating is in this case 4.5 amps so right now it's only drawing about 400 watts 450 watts or so and um, that's fine and it can take the surge that uh, inverter that I have will definitely be able to run this small air unit, but it definitely cannot run the larger one. So this is something that I hope everyone keeps in mind when they're trying to size their inverter, when they're trying to size their solar setup, their battery bank, whatever. When you're trying to start something like this, a compressor, you need to be absolutely sure your inverter will be able to supply the energy, because in this case, my inverter cannot power this one, but it can definitely power this one. So this is super cold, obviously hot in the back there, but this is just for a demonstration. So hopefully that helps you and is able to give you some information as far as how to size your solar setup. Um, I'm going to be running that smaller one when we have sun. Today's supposed to be a really nice day, so I'm going to be putting it in the window and I'll be running it on solar since the inverter is more than capable of supplying that energy. The smaller one is the one I'm going to use. Now, what I'm curious about is if anyone out there has a larger 8,000 watt or greater power jack inverter with a sizable battery bank. I'm just curious if it'll be able to take the draw of that window air unit that's on the bottom down there. Because I'd really like to run the bottom one. So, anyway, uh, hopefully this information helps you. So, take care.